Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers. In today's episode we're going to model this 3D scene as you can see it here. We're going to make the house, we're going to make the land, import the plants, add the trees, add the grass, create all the necessary materials and doing the post-production at the end. So if you guys are ready, let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to go to customize unit setup and just change to these two centimeters and the scene system also is on centimeters and then by using the reference plan i will leave a link in the description in case you don't know or you can just go back to my last video and i have a link there now i'm just gonna drag and drop my file i just need to find it first okay and we have our file i need to add a new v map to it and take the real world scale so now i have my image there is one thing that i know for sure here it's probably the height of this window which i will say it's around 220 if this is 90 another 90 yeah i will just make it 220 so i will just create here a rectangle and i will make this uh, 220 and what i'm going to do next i'm just going to scale this i'll just move my pivot first to here somewhere and now I'll, I'll just scale my image so it's going to match yeah approximately this rectangle so i know that it's more or less in the right dimension so yeah as you can see in this image yeah i'm gonna try to work directly on this image to create my my 3d so what we're going to do first we're just going to create a rectangle here Okay, so probably this is my uh, uh, my house. I'll just extrude this now. I can always go back if case I want to to change the dimensions of my house. But yeah, this should be fine. Control all corner, extrude back. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do. Yeah, we need to create a window in this box. So I'm just going to do that by applying an editable poly in here and another one on the other direction like this. And probably yeah, just like this, this is our window. So here we need to create a window, uh, but before that we need to create the wood slats. So to do that, I'm just going to select my uh, my 3D that I already made. And I'm just going to select these parts where I want to have the wood slats. And I'm going to detach this. Detach. Okay, and now I'm going to isolate my object. And now I'm going to apply a floor generator. Having a problem with this floor generator. And in the moment that I did that, as you can see, the floor generator is already creating my, my wood slats or wood panels. As you can see here, I'm just going to apply the Alt X to see them better. Okay, they are looking well. So what I want to do is to unhide my 3D and my photo actually and keep only these two. Okay, and now I will change the directions of the slats. So to do that, I need to go here in the direction and I'll have 90. Okay, and now as you can see, these ones are quite small. So I'm just going to change this by putting seven in here. See if it's enough. No, it's more than that. So probably 10 centimeters. Yeah, 10 looks uh, more a little bit as I can see here, maybe 12 be also and if i want to change the directions the offset i can just offset this on the other direction on the y in this case to check if they are exactly yeah so they are 12 and now as you can see i have them also on the other direction because it's the their length is only 10 meters so to fix that i'm just gonna take the offset out and now i have the slats in here to make them perfect i will take the bevel and the extrude out because uh yeah, the problem is with this bevel and the extrude is that in the moment that you are applying an editable poly, for example, and I want to create here some uh, loops, as you can see, I can't do that because it's not one object, the whole thing, and it has... So anyway, to fix that, it's better not to 
use only the extrude and the bevel and in the moment that I want to have an extrude here I will just apply a shell for one centimeter for example in this case I don't know from where is this line and then I can uh, yeah, apply my own uh, things so yeah it's much uh, better this way in my case and then if I want to have the bevel in here I can just uh, apply on a chamfer on top of this and I will just make the chamfer smaller and yeah I can have it in here as you can see so yeah I prefer it this way uh, it's much better for me and it's working better so okay we have the wood slats on this direction we need to make them also on the other direction and to do that I need to create here the height of my attic and I need to have this do that so I will use another object as a reference I'll just create here the sweep and then I will just move it the and I will just move it in here and then I'll just move the height around here doesn't need to be perfect uh, we will adjust everything afterwards so I'm just using this for uh, having it as a reference because uh, yeah my 3d model probably is not gonna be exactly the same as this in the end as you can see here I already made a mistake because the window should go a little bit lower so but it's easy to check to fix that I just need to go here and move these vertices lower here and uh, the other direction I need to create these lines alt Q I'm just gonna isolate the whole thing and then I will just uh, make both of them on the same height and now by using the bridge I can just bridge them together and now when I add my uh, floor generator on top of it as you can see I have it everywhere where I need it anyway for now it's totally fine I think this is looking good uh, let's create also here the part as I can see on this side there are two windows so I will try to create also those uh, with alt Q I will just isolate my object and here I'm just going to create fast yeah, two windows they don't need to be perfect but they just need to be there and now I will select my resulting object and now we'll just uh, yeah detach this okay and then I will unhide my all my objects select my wood slat from the other side and uh, just take all of this with a copy and apply them here and they are looking good but they are on the wrong direction so the only thing that I need to do here there is a problem but I don't really care about that so I just need to change the direction back to zero and I have the wood slats also on the other direction as you can see the height is not the same as this but I can just fix that by taking all of this with a shift on and through them here and then this can with bridge and this can go also with bridge and yeah it's all looking good because there is a gap in between the wood slats I need to create another face behind this so to do that I will just make a copy with shift of this and then I will just take out all of this and move this copy here change the pivot and move all of this here and the same also for the other one with shift on copy delete everything and just move it back here and now I know for sure that I'm not going to see between this uh, wood slat so uh, yeah what's behind uh, my architecture and as you can see these are just connecting here which is perfect so we have now right now uh, I don't have a camera in the scene but right now we have the wood slats maybe the height is not the same as in the picture um, but we can fix that really easy can just go here uh, first of all I just need to be sure that this is going to be my angle yeah I'll just make a camera for now from this view just to have it as a reference and I will yeah maybe change the height for now I'll just leave it as it is okay yeah I don't need to have everything exactly as in this image okay the next thing that I want to create is the the windows so let's do that so I will just make a rectangle here and this is going to be extruded with cup start and off 
and then here I'll just unhide everything and create the depth of the wall as you can see and then this can also go with the shell on top of it as it's looking uh, good and now let's start creating the windows but first let me just check how these windows are actually looking so there is a big frame as you can see and then on this frame we have the window that is opening that is going to be open yeah so there is a frame and then on top of the frame there are the windows so we're going to do something similar with that so what we're going to use is this as a reference and then on this I'm going to go here and somewhere here 180 maybe okay this looks good and then to this I'm going to apply a sweep as a bar on the inside is it on the inside no not yet no we need to apply a double spline to this Ah, oh, this is why it's not on the inside my wood plank okay now it should be fine this is uh, right now five by five centimeters yeah it doesn't really matter i'll apply a chamfer to it uh, the chamfer i use uh, only smooth chamfer only i don't want to see this yeah, the depth, I think it's fine. I just want to have it here, okay. Let's make it less. Off in the viewport. And then I will just create another rectangle just for the glass sheet. I will just move this also in the middle here. And to this, I'm going to apply a shell with uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 centimeters, which is one and one millimeter okay and then we have a window and then to this window i'm just gonna make a copy of it and move it next to this one and then this can go with an editable poly on top and then make a copy of, with ctrl and shift to this object and i just need to adjust these two things and move this in the middle and now here i'm going to create another frame and another one and these two editable spline attach they are going together and this needs to go in the middle of the new frame and to this we're gonna apply another sweep and chamfer paste but this time we're gonna make it just smaller so if we had we're gonna make it three by three and now we have a different depth in here as you can see and this helps a lot of in the viewport and i should also create the glass sheet in here so i'm just gonna take one of them and move it like this and then take this and make a copy here and we have the doors i will just take all of this with shift and make another copy i don't know if this pole the resulting is going to be this wide but for now we'll just uh, leave it as it is uh, you can do whatever you want in here and i will also adjust this part here to the according to these windows just to uh, just to make it to fix it and i also need to fix the wood slats okay and also the one which is behind like this okay and for now we have created the i can delete this for now okay file save as for those that are following on my patreon they can just download this from there okay so we have the windows we have the wall we need to create this gutter in here as you can see oh yeah let's do that actually another thing that we need to create is the roof so let me just select my roof here i will detach this as usual and click on this roof isolate and then also using the floor generator and to this floor generator I have a very long i will just make it 20 and then i will do the offset 50 percent and yeah it's a uh, we have a roof i guess i don't like how it's starting so i'm just gonna change that this is good 
Mm, yeah, the height is way too big, so I need to make it this. We said this 20, I'll just make it 5. 20 by 5, 6, 10. Okay, this is uh, okay. I need a bigger gap in between them. This is uh, good, I guess. Don't like how they are starting. They should start with a full. Uh, yeah, like this is fine. Don't care in the top part. Okay, and now let's apply a shell to all of this. Yeah, let's not make it that big, maybe 0.5. Now chamfer. It's a little bit too much. Okay, this is all looking good. I think I'll just save this. Now I will just move the pivot in the center of the object. We'll go in the other direction. Just make a copy of it. Delete all these layers and move everything underneath. Okay, and now we have also a background for all of this. Now it's all looking amazing. Okay, let's do also the other side. So we have our little house in here. Oh, another thing that uh, I should do now is to add these uh, windows also here on the side. And not only the windows, but also this uh, wood part. Okay, let me just uh, make a copy of all of these. Just a copy, rotate everything. It's almost perfect. Oh, it's coming from here. Okay, let me just move this back. Okay, now it's fine. Control S. Okay, now, now we have also those windows. Oh no, let's start creating the top part, this part here, this thing, that it's uh, it is quite simple, I just need uh, this line, let me see if it's going to work like this, just gonna try, create shape from selection, okay, and then this shape that I need to select, I'm gonna apply a sweep, this time the sweep is going to be an angle and I'm going to unhide my roof and I'll go to here and this needs to go in the center and let's see so one is four let's make it uh, how much we set 12 10 10 thickness that is fine this should go zero and another thing the pivot I'll just move it here in this corner so now I can rotate my whole thing how much do I need uh, maybe 135 this uh, didn't really go as I expected because needs to go here because I have 90 degrees here but my roof doesn't have 90 degrees as you can probably see so to fix this I'm just gonna take uh, I'm gonna leave it as it is I'm gonna apply an editable poly and I will just delete all these faces which I don't need Let me see if I can scale them. Yeah, this can also work. And now I will apply again a shell over on top. Zero on this direction and 0.5 in this direction. And let's see. And yeah, it should be fine. I just need to leave, move it a little bit more here. Uh, how much did I use here? The shell was oh, 0.8. I need 0.8 here. 
put an egg also here. And uh, yeah, we have this detail here. I will take this chamfer that is looking very nice and I will just apply it on top of this. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is to create this gutter here and also this pipe for the gutter which is going in this area here as you can uh, probably see. So yeah, let's do that. So I'm just gonna leave only these two here and here I'm just going to create a gutter. Uh, most of the time it's quite easy to create a gutter. These are all different types of gutters. As you can see, yeah, probably ours is round like this. So yeah, it has uh, this kind of section. So we're just going to create uh, a round one. These are also some dimensions, as you can see, 115. So this means a 50. So I'll just make here 2.5. And then uh, I'll apply an editable spline to this. Using one, I will just extend this for a bit and then I will, using the arch, I will just create here a small gap like this. And then on the other side, I will just create something similar, maybe like this. And I will just move this one in here and this one here. And then this can go with an editable spline and attach these things and then with an A weld and that's kind of it and what's happening next is to move this here I don't know if it's big enough this 0.5 means 5 centimeters 5 centimeters is not that big so let's make it 5 I think it's more like this yeah makes sense okay let me just delete this and uh, recreate the arch there but i this is more than enough okay let me attach this one here let's do this weld and uh, yeah this also needs to be our cap at the end so i'm just gonna make a copy of it right now just to have it for later and this can go extrude in that direction and it can go till the end and then this one can just I can just delete these parts here and uh, create a line between this point and this weld points uh, weld and then an editable poly just to have a nice uh, and that's kind of it. Of course, this also has an angle, so the water can go in that direction or this one. And also we need to create here the, I'll just go with less steps because I would like to apply a um, turbo smooth to all of this. So why I'm doing this is because I want to create here uh, our hole for the, so I'm gonna go with five, two steps this means that also this one needs to go with two. Okay, now they are correct, both of them. And to this one, I will apply an editable poly. Okay, this is my editable poly. And then to this point, I'll create a chamfer. Okay maybe less this is looking good then i'll apply an editable poly to this and to this i will just go like this just to delete this make all of this into one plane okay this is looking good and now let's apply our turbo smooth and see what's happening okay this is not looking very well at least this is uh Round. and let's see what's happening okay isolate this take this out and I'll just move this point here and also the other one and now I'll go again weld now using the L, uh, alt one I'll just going to create here some beautiful and that one didn't go exactly where I wanted, but I will just uh, move it. 
needs to have it as close as possible there. And then on this other direction, I will just create one here and let's see now. Now the turbo smooth is looking better. As you can probably see, uh, we can even go with more. There are quite many faces in that direction, but it's uh, fine. I think it's uh, cool. The only thing is that this is wider and this is not that wide. Mm, yeah, I think it was better if they were going directly from there. This meant that I need to have even less of these steps so I can make the hole here bigger. So, okay, let's do that. Delete, delete. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply again on a double poly. As I said here, let's do that. And okay, and now we have our hole in here. I can just the bottom part. This can go all on the Y and can go low, lower, I mean in the ground probably. And here I will just isolate this with Alt Q and then this point needs to, this one they need to weld their, their nearby uh, vertices. I hope it's all looking good. And now I will apply another editable poly and I will make here a couple of Let's see, look at this beauty, it's perfect, almost, we can have more or less and we can also use an isoline dis display, this way it's going to look better and we can also add a shelf, just a very very small one, 0 uh, 0.01 maybe, just to have a little bit of thickness in there. And then for this, I uh, will just go with S. Let's see with the turbo smooth, is it going to be the same? Unfortunately not, because it didn't work out very well. But what I can do is to here to apply an editable poly and to take this beautiful line and to create a shape out of it. Maybe now, create a shape. Okay, and with this, Okay, this can also go and all these points can weld together. Probably you don't need to make all these details, but as I said before, uh, I like uh, making details. And then I will just extrude this for 0 0.02, 0 0.2, that should be enough. Uh, yeah, just to have a small, even less, I think. This we don't need, this we need. Okay, and now, okay, another thing that we need to create here is a metal part that is keeping all of this on this area and it's coming like this. So to do that, I will just take this and make a copy of it and I will just delete all of this till I'm getting that thing here and I will just uh, extrude this 1.5 maybe and apply a turbo smooth to it and the shell and this time the shell is going to be on the outside as you can see it's very nice and uh, yeah it has also detail on this side like this but having the point here I'll apply an editable poly and uh, yeah, just add here Okay, I think uh, it's uh, something like that, using an array, actually let me see, uh, generate mapping, real one, okay, now using an array, as you can see, just went on the X and I don't need it there, zero, but I need this on the Y, oh it's not even on the Y, yeah, depending on the 
how do you start making this it's going to show so it's on the Z and uh, I'm gonna go with minus one here so it's gonna go in the other direction and now I'm just going to add the spacing here which can be 60 centimeters um, yeah, I will just use an offset one more of them in that direction minus 50 be more than enough uh, this is looking good and what I can do I can also apply a chamfer to this 0.1 even less 0.2 and smooth the entire object and here also anyway it's uh, more than enough for now and uh, for the pipe we need also to create a detail so I'm just going to see that apply an editable poly Oh, I don't even need an edit. Oh yeah, I need an editable body for this. Okay, and create a shape out of this. Affect the pivot center to the object. Move it up. And to this I'm going to apply the um, sweep. And to this sweep is going to be as a bar. 0.1 by 0.1. And this is not really quite round from what I see, but anyway, I'll just leave it as it is. Normally it's quite round or it's square. Uh, I'll apply an editable poly and here I'll just extrude all of this till it's going into the wall. And this needs to go as an X. Then I will apply here a detail like this and then to all of this I will extrude it with local normals it's not really like that but I just want to add some extra details to all of this now I will apply also a small chamfer to this which is going to be 0.103 maybe and uh, also apply an array to all of this generating mapping coordinates and array and it's definitely not the x it's the y with some spacing in between uh, yeah we don't need that many this should be enough now we'll take out the last two here i can actually have double poly and just extrude all of this like this and then to this part to delete it and apply a shell I have some thickness to it this can go on the bottom part this can be zero now it's looking more realistic okay so as you can see we have some details in here yeah i'm sure it's going to look amazing okay one thing that i forgot is to create some layers i'll create one here for the house call it house and i'm just going to copy everything but not the camera Okay, I'm quite happy with this for now. And now let's move forward. Oh yeah, this should go also on the other side. I can just take the whole thing and make a copy, make a group first, and I can apply a symmetry to the whole thing on the Y and mirror it and flip. And if I have this mirror here in the center, it should be totally fine which it is okay for now this is good yeah let's uh, create also the the terrace there is a terrace here as you can see which is going like that and uh, yeah let's do that let me see i'll take this here i'll just create a terrace like this for the terrace i'm going to use the floor generator the shell and the chamfer because this is similar and as you can see it's looking amazing already and for the bottom part i'm gonna make a copy of this copy and delete all of that and i will just go with um, it can be an extrude for example here i can go this is a floor generator this is 12 so this can go also 12 so minus 12 and then apply a shell to it and then uh yeah the chamfer and the shell actually i can take them from here and i can delete this and paste and after that i can apply an uh, 
I need to be sure that I have the generator mapping coordinate and then I will apply an array this array can go on the z axis with minus offset and with a small gap minus one zero five actually this could be fine maybe even less uh, the shell is on the outside i want to have it on the inside I have zero here I can have a better detail in here and yeah that's kind of it I just put it so I can have it more in the ground because I don't know exactly how the ground is going to be for now. Okay, and now let's uh, move forward with the rest of the stuff. I will just take these walls. I'm just going to create here my uh, like a small detail. I'll apply a sweep to it. And then here I will apply an editable poly. Delete all of this, create a shape out of this. And this can go corner. And then I will apply another sweep. As you can see, sweep is the main tool in, uh, not only in 3D Studio Max, but in general. It's quite fast and easy to use. This is just a detail. Yeah, here we're gonna have some pebbles and then we have this part of metal which keeps the pebbles in there and then we have the grass and the rest of the stuff uh, that is happening in here. Uh, let's see what else we do in it here. Okay, there are some details, a cable that is coming out. This is a plug and this is a light that we can uh, yeah, create or add this from some place and uh, yeah we need some chairs in here and now uh, we need the uh, land okay I'll just start with uh, a simple plane and I will apply an editable poly to this and I will collapse the whole thing and then I will just uh, yeah start playing so first of all this part going in this direction and just need to add another line in here because I think I'm just creating some extra edges so in the moment that I'm adding the turbo mode everything is going to look fine I mean the curvature here is gonna stay as it is and here I'm just going to add another editable poly and try to buy this so Okay, and then uh, I will apply a noise. And then another a big noise and then a smaller one. Anyway, for now I'll just leave it as it is. I'll add a new map, the old map, and hide all. Let's add this on plan. Hide it for now. Let's create a custom view. 0.6 should be more than enough. Yeah, let's just go closer. In the camera, let's change the field of view. Maybe move a little bit further, a little bit lower, select the camera, 
we have vertical build. So let's uh, move forward with the materials. I showed you this guy before, rvddesign.art. We're going to use his textures. You can download them for, for from here. It's costing you a regular license is $5. Yeah, I think it's quite a cheap price for what you are getting. Uh, these textures are really good. So we're going to use them from now on in our uh, tutorials. So I'm going to use this one. You can also take this one with a print screen if you want if, by doing this, for example, and then you can just save it and then uh, using Photoshop you can uh, just open the image it's going to be a PNG. Uh, yeah, you need to make cut for this. We can also check the yeah, here it's not really perfect, perfectly tileable, but uh, yeah, you can fix that. I showed you before how to do anything like that, and uh, that's quite easy. You just take the and you start creating the missing parts. The image size is yeah accordingly to your uh, to your desktop but uh, yeah it's fine for now this is quite far i'll just save this as a jpeg and then i will open again this image you need to go to preference to camera raw and here in the camera raw on the file handling you need to have here all supported jpegs automatically open all supported jpegs and then click OK. And then in the moment that I'm going to open again my JPEG that I just saved, it's going to be open with the camera row. And now here I can go to enhance my image and click on, on the enhance. And now I'm gonna get the double of the uh, resolution that I had before. Yeah, you can also add here some extra texture if you want to see the texture better. This could help. And you can also change the colors if you want. You can make it more blue or uh, changing the temperature you can make it less uh, the vibrance can go less in here because I want a more yellowish image and then I'll just click open as you can see this is my image and image size right now is 2000 by so it's 2k if I want to make this even bigger I can just save this again as a JPEG enhance copy copy save okay and now when I'm going to open this again it's going to be open again with the camera raw and I can enhance again the image and I get the double the resolution so in this way you can use any shitty texture and size yeah the quality is not really amazing but it is definitely going to work for this type so image size as you can see is 4k right now so it's definitely gonna work having a, a pixel plant you, you can just buy it or yeah just use any other type of, uh, of plugin to create textures. As you can see here I can create my roughness. Actually you need to go and create the normal first base color map. This is my normal. In the moment that I did that it's creating all my normals for me. I can create more details or less depends on how I want how I would like to have this texture I just need some normals in there and then the displacement I don't care the roughness I will just create it from the normals from the normal map and I have another roughness you can adjust it here intensity if I want to have it more reflective or less and so on and then at the end you can just extract the all this uh, uh, textures, uh, ambient occlusion, I don't need it. Uh, yeah, I can just click in here and uh, change all the files. Wood is a PNG, uh, PNG is a better quality, just hit save and you should have the texture in there. Okay, now let's go back to our file. I just opened the slate material, I will just save this for now. We'll just rename this wood and I will go with the. Oh, I see that Corona is on. I will just change my render engine to V-Ray for now, okay. I'll go to with materials and now I'll go V-Ray material as usual. And to this V-Ray material, you always need to apply a V-Ray bitmap. And to this bitmap, you can just go and load the textures that we just saved. Now we'll go with the base color first and to this base color, I will just apply it on the diffuse. And here, I'll just leave everything as it is for now. The tiling I don't care because we are going to apply a new UV randomizer to this and this UV randomizer is going here and for this I will make it uh, 200 by 200 so this means that it's 2 meters by 2 meters for now it should be fine and then uh, with shift I will just move this here and load my uh, normal map and this needs to go to a V-Ray normal 
and in here and this needs to go to a bump and one thing that you need to know is this needs to go 100 because when you are using normal maps it's important to have the bump at 100 and then if you want to change the height of the bump you can just go here and change the height from here so this is how it's actually working and then i will add in here also the roughness map which is this one and this one is going to the reflection glossiness and to have some glossiness in there i just need to add here some uh, reflection so a wide reflection and then if i want to change this uh, glossiness in here to have it according to this map i can just go and apply an, uh, on the general a color correction like this and now by changing the brightness of the image, I can just change the glossiness of my of my material. As you can see, I can add a little bit of glossiness. It's always good to have a little bit of glossiness. All the materials in the world, they have a little bit of glossiness. So uh, even though sometimes you don't really see it, it can be quite big like this, but it's always there. Because you know, yeah, you can have like a thin layer of lacquer on it or uh, yeah, some kind of um, uh, any environment. The environment can change the material. Everything can change the material. So yeah, depending on the how the weather is the material is looking in one way or another and okay and now let's apply our material to object as you can see i'll take this out for now and i'll just go and see how the material is actually looking i need to apply a uv map to this as a box to actually to see it the moment that i did that i can actually see it this is good and this can go also here and another thing that i would like to do is to tell this uvv randomizer that i want to have it by element in this way is going to change here on the uv rotation i don't want to rotate this material even though you can do it if you have 360 for example and you want and you add here four it's gonna rotate four times so 360 divided by four means 90 so this means that it's going to be rotated 90 degrees this is good to know i'm going to use also the stochastic tiling in here in moment, the moment that i did that as you can see this can go in two directions so i will go 180 here and i'll make it two and now it's just gonna be correct yeah let's check that don't like this corona camera in here let's add the v-ray camera uh, yeah not from there from here and um, field of view let's leave it like this and now let's add also a um, material to the on uh, hdri to all of this so we can see the materials and to do that as usual it's super simple you go to v-ray v-ray light and here you click the dome and you add a dome in the scene but because I'm in the plan layer, I'm going to create another layer here called lights. And now I should be able to see the material. And to add an HDRI to this, let's use uh, Cosmos, Chaos Cosmos from uh, uh, V-Ray, as you can see. And here, let's go to HDRIs and let's find the beautiful HDRI. Uh, yeah, we're just going to use one from them for now and later on we can uh, just change it with some different ones. Let's download this Sun 030. Uh, so in the moment to, to add this HDRI directly to your light, you just need to select your light and then in the moment that you are using the import, it's telling me that the selected importer was not found because I didn't select my light, but I did. Okay, and now let's open the as you can see this is the material and by clicking on our light and uh, lock the texture on it you can just rotate this and in the moment that you're doing that is, is it also getting rotated in the in the scene as you can see here so uh, let's just apply this material also on the other part so i'm going to apply it here with a new v map box and uh, as you can see also on this we'll just apply it and here as you can see the needs to be rotated to do that you can just use a new vvx form and here you can just use the rotation for 90 degrees okay so we did all of that where else on this part which is the interior i just need to delete these two windows I will just apply it also here even though probably I'm not going to see much 
but that's only part of the interior so I just want to have it there so I'm not going to see anything from my interior and now let's create quick some uh, a glass material I already showed you how to do that uh, the glass material is quite simple you can use a preset from here if you don't know how to create a, a material but if you if you do if you want to do it yourself you need to make a diffuse a black diffuse for the material and then on the reflection we're gonna add the ref as much as possible and the refraction also and now we have a simple glass material if you want to be a little bit more fancy you can go here with a glossiness of 0.99 because it's not perfect this glass and here with the refraction you can also go with a little bit of less 0.99 and if you want to add a little bit more stuff into it you can also add a translucency and here you can just add a little bit of color to it just a small fraction and here you can just say how thick is this glass so when is going to start to become green so for example now it's set uh, the setup is for one centimeter so this means that between zero and once and when it's gonna go end up with from zero to one centimeter at one centimeter it's gonna start to become green it's going to be this greenish bluish uh, if you want to have it later you can have here 10 centimeters one 150 as you can see and this is how it's working so I'm just gonna leave it uh, one for now and uh, yeah let's see how it's everything actually looking I have here Orona camera that I would like to delete and I'll go to my window and try to apply this to my window as you can see it's already looking good and now let's create the material for the for the frame so the frame is all black so to do that I will just uh, try to get this material in here and I will just make it black so what I'm going to do I'm gonna take this material in here as you can see the wood that I already made and now I'll just click on all of this and with shift I will make a copy of it and here I will say frame window I will delete the other one and now also here I will just uh, delete the mapping source which is the, the diffuse and I will use just a black color for this and I will just go somewhere around here and this is going to be my frame as you can see it's just a black and it has some nice beautiful reflections on it from the reflection glossiness and now I'm just going to select my frames from the scene also these ones and then I will just apply this to my frames you need to be sure that when you are selecting the frames you have the generate mapping coordinates to all of them sometimes you can just forget about that like in my case now and you just need to do it at the end real world map size and generate mapping coordinates so I'm just going to do that now as you can see don't be stupid like me be smarter and just do it when you are actually creating the objects so i just need to do it also here and also here otherwise if you don't have this on you need to apply a uv map to this and you need to apply it on the, the direction so it's one direction is vertical and then you need to make a selection of the objects and apply it also on the other direction i showed that in a couple of tutorials that i made in the past okay let's uh, make select all of this now and apply our material and it's there i would like to apply that also on the interior which is this and this this here there is a small mistake but i will just uh, fix it by doing this anyway yeah this is the shell and those are the frames and uh, yeah, let's save what we did until now let's create a black metal like an iron for uh, these parts in here for the details and to do that we're going to use a website for the materials or you can just go here to this website and you can just download this metal 28 mbncg.com and this guy is also having some really nice textures just go with jpeg 8k or whatever you think you need i will go with this though it's uh, almost one gigs of textures in here these are quite big uh, maybe 4k is also good and let's apply all of that and create a new material 
metal black and now we'll just go as usual with V-Ray MTL with a V-Ray bitmap and to this bitmap I will just apply my texture from the metal or my files okay and now we're just going to use the color as you can see we're gonna add a full reflection to this and then I'm just with a copy just going to use the roughness and this goes to re the reflection glossiness and I have that and then I'm creating another one and this goes to the metalness and this goes here in the metalness as an instance and all of this uh, I'm going to connect them to a new UV randomizer uh, view image I will just make this no, one meter by one meter let's say maybe and uh, right now if I take the reflection glossiness out from here you see that it's a metal and uh, yeah because these materials are made by is the other uh, this is actually a glossiness but it needs to be inverted so to have it correctly and now it's the correct material or what you can also do is to add in here from general a uh, color correction like this and then invert here so this is the correct material i will use the stochastic tiling to be sure that i don't have any repetition and then i will just start applying my material here okay and another thing that i need to add in here is a uv map i can just add it as a box we're not going to see the repetitions on or, or anything on into this and uh, yeah let's unhide everything and we have the metal in there it's quite black okay uh, let's uh, work with the roof for the roof uh, we're just going to use from uh, the same guy Radetzky this guy uh, just go to textures and here he has this concrete wall textures and we're just going to use one of these these are all free so please download them and uh, yeah probably we're going to use this one or or this one I don't know yet let's see which one is working uh, the best okay V-Ray bitmap I'll just go to concrete and here I'll just open my maps and I'll just use this one uh, this will go to a V-Ray bitmap material as usual and for the rest of the stuff that we are going to create here and everything else I'm going to use also a new VV randomizer I'm going to use this map for everything else so first I will just make this uh, 50 by 50 be enough for now and then I will just use a stochastic tiling here and that's kind of it and then I will just use a reflection and for this I will go with reflection glossiness it's already looking good and then I'll go with the um, very color tube to bump. This is going to a bump. So we have some bump also. One centimeter, it's a lot. 30, so 0.2. And then another thing that I would like to do is to add in here a color correction for this map. And uh, yeah, I'll just use this as a monochrome. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And I will just uh, use advanced and add a little bit of reflection into this. And then we can just apply this to our roof. Uh, let's do that. Okay, on X we have it. And also in here we need to apply that. And this needs to the sweep needs to go with generate map coordinates and this needs to go with an UV map in this also here am I missing oh no I'm not I don't have a material on it let's apply this also and UV map planner UV map planner on high doll and here in the randomizer let's use by element and by object ID and let's have a look let's save always save okay and another thing that i would like to do now uh, because i'm seeing the ceiling on the other side these two i'm just going to collapse all and attach the other one weld the vertices weld and now i will just apply a shell on the inner amount and for this i'm going to apply a different material id because i would like to have two materials here one for the outside and one for the inside 
I'll use a multi sub object. I will apply this in here, and for the interior, I'm just going to use a simple white material. Now, I will apply this to my object, and as you can see, the inner is getting directly the texture that we need. I can also change this to, to one to two in case I wanted. And now, in the moment that I'm gonna render, we can see it's getting a little bit whitish in there. So, yeah, I'm happy with the with the overall look of the uh, roof. As you can see, uh, yeah, let's create the rest of the stuff. Okay, for the ground part, which is this one, yeah, maybe the qualified anymore very well. I'll use a subdivide. Uh, this should work better. I'll just make it adaptive, a little bit smaller. Yeah, now it's better, for sure. And uh, yeah, we can just go with this more like this. And let's uh, add some gravel for this part. I'm going to use these textures from here. You can just download the 4K. And for the ground, I'm gonna download this. Okay. And uh, now let's. Uh, And this as usual with the randomizer and this goes with stochastic styling and we can make it to 100 by 100 that should be more than enough and let's add the rest of the textures which are the ground displacement I don't care I need the normal with a direct X and this goes as usual with a normal map and this goes in the pump which goes 100 and then this goes also with some roughness and roughness that needs to be inverted and this goes in the reflection glossiness and uh, let's add some reflection and this is our ground a little bit of pump and let's apply this this doesn't have a UV map and we have it okay let's create also the gravel for the gravel, I'm just going to use directly this, make a copy of all of it, because I already made it, and it's going to be more or less similar. And this is gonna go here, and to this we need to apply a new map, it looks perfect. And now let's create also the metal for this part, and for that I'm just going to take all of this, make a copy. Let's go back to uh, our friend Vladimir. Let's see Vladimir, what do you have here for the metals? You have this beautiful rust set. And uh, yeah, let's download this. And now let's load our rusty texture. We're going to use this one. And for the rest, we're going to use a color to pump. This is gonna go like this. And we can also add a color correction in here because this is quite colorful and I don't like that. And let's take the saturation a little bit out. This needs to go to 100 we said. And let's apply that into here. Okay, now let's go to Chaos Cosmos and find some uh, furniture for the outside. Maybe this one could work nice. So like the umbrella. Okay, let's import this. Let's go. Let's see where it is. Okay, this is nice. Let's move everything on the right height. Okay, this is good. And also let's bring in the umbrella. All these small details. They make a render to look better. And let's see. Okay, let's turn a little bit the light. Okay, this is how it's looking. Uh, even though the sun is coming through this material, I would like to have some glow underneath. So let's play a little bit with the material. Umbrella. Let's see how it was made. Yeah, they are using all the time this very two-sided material but this is not needed anymore because you can just uh, 
create your own uh, material by putting some translucency to it. Okay, a little bit of refraction, it's gonna do the work. As you can see, this is what I meant. I just want to have different uh, shades on the inside because the light is going through the material, so this helps a lot the way the with the way that everything is looking so yeah it's good always to play a little bit with the materials to make them better and here because uh, yeah, the bump is a little bit too high let's fix also that oh no it's uh, because of the roughness yeah now it's better here we can see a lot on what's happening on the inside or we add some more furniture inside or we um, we add some um, yeah, curtains or something like that so we don't see that much on the inside let's see what we can do let's add some furniture first on the inside I'm going to add this this and uh, some kitchen furniture this could work tables and chairs okay let's import this uh, and this for now let's see where they are Okay, then yeah, it's looking uh, more realistic, let's say, for the overall looking of this scene. Uh, where is it? The metal black, which is this one. Could do uh, yeah, color correction in here. And let's add some brightness to it. Two should be fine. Correction, no, no saturation, so we make it black and white. I think it's much better overall. Uh, yeah, let's add an exposure in here. A little bit of contrast, maybe not too much. Uh, some tone mapping. Okay, so for the next part we're gonna start adding some trees. I'm going to use these uh, 3D models from the uh, Max Tree Plants Volume 24. As you can see, these are the plants. We're gonna use these uh, beautiful ones. I'm going to show you in a second. We're going to use these ones for the background. Also, these are the same family. And uh, and these ones for the foreground. So what we have in the front of the building and so on. So what I did, I uh, imported all of them in here. And what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to uh, divide my 3D Studio Max in many viewports. Uh, one of the viewports needs to be the camera. And I'm going to arrange them according to my camera. So in this way, I know for sure that everything is working well together. So I'm going to add one here in the back. I'm going to add another Another one here you need to move it higher you can also scale them if you want you can do uh, whatever you want as you can see this one is still in the ground so the roots they need to be a little bit out because this is how the trees are actually growing this is what we're going to do and then at the end you're gonna end up with something like this as you can see i added so this is my view uh, right now so this is how it's going to look so yeah you need to spread them in such a way that you're going to see also the uh, house this one needs to go more to the left i think like this a little bit more to the back a little bit more to the left yeah maybe this will work so yeah you need to arrange them in such a way that uh, it's going to help your image so always don't try not to have trees in front of your windows try to keep them on the side because this is what you're also going to do if you are making this house you're gonna try not to have anything in front of your windows because you want to see far away and yeah this is uh, for this part and now let's discuss about the background Okay, and now we're going to use the forest pack and um, yeah, I'm just gonna add in 
my trees. Okay, the last two, I'm gonna make them show less, 30%, and um, all of them should uh, go with the paint, and this can go out. And for the paint, I'm just going to paint here some trees. Let's go to the scene, and now I'll just make it full, just to be sure. I'll change the units to less start with the paint okay uh, for the camera I'm just gonna select my camera and use a camera clipping okay for these trees I can just uh, make them all smaller and I will just do that here from the scale oh no I need to select all of them and do this and this tree can go here and we can have another one in this area as an instance I rotate even like this this can go here and we can have another one in this area okay and now for the hdri i would like to change that hdri i will change this with an uh, hdri from pg skies this one for example yeah, PG skies are probably one of the best. You can sort them by name and in this way you can have one which is really in the morning. So this is the one that we used. As you can see, it's very cloudy and uh, to this we're going to add an, uh, an uh, sun. I'll use the E-Ray sun which is going to come from here now. And this is going to be a size multiplier, maybe 10 and a little bit less power. But to do that, we're going to use the light mix and the denoiser. Let's add them in here. And the denoiser is going to be Intel Open. Okay, now I'll just go to my camera and let's play a little bit with this. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to bring in our sky. Okay, I think this is fine. Uh, we're missing the textures from uh, the trees. Uh, let's uh, bring those ones. Oh no, they are actually here. Yeah, so they are all with, made with Corona Legacy. So what we need to do is go to uh, V-Ray Converters. V-Ray Scene Converters. Convert. And let's see everything all over again. Okay. Select the camera, bring in some closure value, uh, 11 I think it should be fine. Okay, we fixed the leaves. Let's select all the trees. Select similar. And uh, let's add also the camera here. Okay, see, it's definitely better. Okay, yeah, this tree, I don't know what to say about it. Now let's fix the material also for the other trees, which are these ones. So this is quite simple. As you can see, the material is with the two-sided material, which I don't really like because it's not needed anymore. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add this material into here directly. And then to the V-Ray leaf material, I'm just going to use a color to it. And I'm just going to use depth, thin walled, and it should be fine. Uh, another thing that I need to do is apply this material to all the other trees. They're coming from the same family, they are going to have the same material. And then another thing that I forgot here is to, for the forest, is to go on the enable collision. Use here 20% collision. And then on the transform, use all this transform on on 
So in this way we know that everything is gonna be fine. Another thing that I would like in here is to add one of these trees in front of the sun to get some shadows on, on the land here. Uh, let's see. Mm, yes, that this is what I meant. Okay. Okay, um, yeah, this could go a little bit higher, maybe. Mm, the this place looks quite big. Uh, where is it? Three. Um, okay, another thing that I would like to do, block this camera here and then go in my view, scale this tree and also maybe move it more to the left. Okay, and this is uh, our render. Um, okay, uh, let's add in here also a color correction for this to make it a little bit darker. 0.5, 0.6. Just to have the roof a little bit darker, like this. I'm not very sure about this forest. Looks kind of dark in here. Um, another thing that I would like to add in here is a little bit of fog. And you can add that from here. Fog transparency. Okay, this is our fog. Uh, let's make this 900 fog height. Uh, uh, the fog color can be a little bit blue. Okay, let's add the grass. For the grass, uh, we're gonna use the globe plants. They have some really nice uh, plants also here. And let's go to bundles, collections, and uh, grasses and ground covers. And here you have some really nice ones. We're gonna use this uh, Paspalum vagi vaginatum. I think it looks uh, nice and could work really cool with this. Actually, this one, Dactinodon dactylonum, dactylon bermuda grass. This is super beautiful. Anyway, it's quite cheap. Oh, let's bring in the grass. Yeah, I'm not very sure which one should I use. Uh, they both look quite amazing, I will say. But anyway, uh, let's start with creating on Forest Pro, then starting adding the plants. We'll just add them one by one. Uh, no collision, translation, rotation, and scale. Display. Okay, after a couple of small adjustments, um, yeah, this is how it's actually looking. It's uh, looking very nice. I feel like, uh, yeah, I think uh, a tree here on the side. And now let's add also some uh, tall grass in here, uh, a different type of grass than this one. So we're gonna have a little bit more uh, diversity. Let's take that, the diffuse from here. This can go. Um, project manager. Actually, we're just going to use uh, these tall grasses from here to, yeah, to break a little bit this uh, this grass. So let's do that. So use another Forest Pro. Okay, and uh, paint them. Just gonna add here a paint. I'm gonna do this one full, make it small. Should be enough for now. A random, enable collision, 20%, translation, rotation, and scale. 
and that's it I think and let's paint for a bit here maybe this is a little bit too big let's show them as well uh, in the viewport there's a box now let's go with the theme box yeah this should be fine so let's do this so uh, maybe it's still too big the brush size yeah, so let's add a couple of them in this area also here and also here in the back close to the tree line yeah this should be fine but let's also bring in this scene a car maybe this one and uh, also some people these ones and let's bring them here Uh, yeah, another thing that I would like to do before I forget is to add a pipe also in this direction and to do that I will just add another symmetry in the whole thing and to this symmetry I'll just use the oh yeah the X and flip and now I should have it if it's in the middle it should be there oh yeah it's looking good okay let's save again oh, another thing I don't like this tree it's too yeah here it's better and these plants, let's also add some plants on here. Oh no. Here in the front. Okay, let's make some a setup. Here, scene. Save. Brute force or uh, retrace, everything stays as it is. Another thing that I would like you to add in here is this. Three. Three centimeters. Uh, render element. Let's add in here also on Z depth and the wire color. Uh, the Z depth can go, yeah, 500 is should be enough in case we need it. And the uh, resolution 3000. Save and render. Mm, yeah, the Z, Z depth is not big enough. Oh, yeah, let's check how big we need it. So, like 7,000. Uh, let's see now. Mm, yeah, I think it's better. Okay, so we have our files. Let's open them. To import multiple files into Photoshop, you need to go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and then you go where you have your files, in my case the desktop, and I'm just going to select all of them, click OK, and click OK. And then what Photoshop is going to do is going to bring all these files in one file. As you can see, I just need to take my uh, file in here, as you can see, this is it. And this is our ZDEF map and I will just create a folder with all of this and yeah I'm just gonna keep them here and with shift and left I can just make a copy I can also create a mask for this and so on so as usual let's go filter camera row filter and because uh, it's morning I'll just make it I'll just give it a little bit of blue the exposure and of shadows, as you know, a little bit of textures, a little bit of clarity, color mixer, and here I just want to change my greens into more yellow greens, just to make everything more even. As you can see, these are my greens, I just want them a little bit more yellowish. This way, my whole image is becoming. Uh, become better and then saturation I want to bring some blues and 
and I'll just hit OK. And now I'll create a mask and I'll make a copy of this and I'll just add this into my mask. To do that, you just need to open this, Ctrl A, Ctrl C and go here with Alt and click and add this into your I uh, just need to delete this layer and then uh, this one I'm just going to make a copy and delete the layer mask and then what I want to I want to create depth of field to this image there are different ways to do that one of them is to after you add added your Z depth map in here you just go to filter to filter blur lens blur and because you have already a layer mask we're just going to use that. You can't see any changes in here because the radius needs to be bigger. So I'm just going to make it bigger for you to see that. And now I can just change where my blur is going to be. As you can see now, it's exactly here in the front and all the background is getting blurry. And I can go the other way like this. As you can see, it's just moving around. So yeah, this is in the middle and then I will just make the blur, the radius less. Take it, take it out or just add just a little bit or a little bit more as you can see. And this is how you are adding some depth of field to your image. And yes, this uh, helps a lot with the realism. I'm not going to make it uh, too powerful. I'll just leave it as it is. And you can also add a little bit of noise to the whole image. Uh, as you can see here, you can see it. You can also make a Gaussian. And that's it. As you can see, this is our final image. Okay, uh, what else you can do? You can add extra fog in here, for example, if you want. So, if you want to add an extra fog to the whole image you can uh, take this and control a control i and uh, applying this as a as a screen you can just add more fog to the image if you want as you can see here this is just a little bit and then i can add more and more and more so uh, yeah this can be useful sometimes you just need to play with it and uh, yeah this was the episode for today in case you guys liked it please don't forget to subscribe i'm going to try to upload an episode every week let me know in the comments how did you find this episode and if you liked it what else should i improve uh, the sound is good and so on and um, in the future i would like to talk also about the chaos vantage and about the d5 render let me know in the comments which one do you want to learn or you would like to see a tutorial about it and until then thumbs up and see you in the next one bye